So you have no idea how to find your art style, or if you even have one. Not a problem. Now, everyone has an art style whether they know it or not. When I was a little punk in high school, I used to make fun of the kids who got like super deep into their art when they said things like, the red symbolizes the passion in my heart, and it clashes with the cold, cruel blue world around me, but like a phoenix, I will always rise above the- And I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever, man. Just admit that you like drawing big birds. Then my teacher was like, oh yeah? Then what's your art style? And I said something like, Psh, I don't have an art style because I'm not a try-hard dweeb like the rest of you. I just draw things the way I like when I feel like it. And then my teacher was like, and that, you f an idiot is called your art style. And I didn't really get it till later, but long story short, she was right. You have an art style. Everyone does. And you would be surprised how many places in your life it shows up. A good way to get a glimpse at your art style is to look at your handwriting in comparison to your friends. Like seriously, go tell five of your friends to write the word stuff on a piece of paper, mix them up, and just see if you can guess whose handwriting belongs to who. Your style is shaped by how you see the world. It mirrors your beliefs and is reflected in how you walk, how you talk, how you dress, and how you address others. All of those things are contained in your art style. And the best demonstration of this that I've ever seen was from Walt Disney himself, when he was explaining how different each of his painters' styles were, and how they learned from each other in order to create the one style that eventually dominated animation as we know it. If you haven't seen the whole video, I highly recommend it. But to sum up the important part, Walt Disney took the four artists responsible for drawing the original Sleeping Beauty on a vacation one Saturday, went to the park and told them to draw a tree. When his artist asked in what style, he told them, yours. However you want to capture what you see. And each of these professional artists drew the tree in their own style. And the results are as shown. Now remember, everyone was drawing the same tree. But what I want you to notice is that none of them see the tree the same way. Literally. All four of these guys are world-class painters. And when Walt told them to draw what they saw, the thing this guy noticed the most was the branches, the overall silhouette and shape of the main body. You can see which branches he thinks are the most important. There's also a sense of space and a very clear distinction between the branches that are close to him versus the branches that are far away. Colors for this guy are no factor. For him, it's all about the shape. The next guy is the complete opposite. The precise shape of the tree is not important. What's important is that it's a tree. It's beautiful. It's colorful, vibrant, and powerful. Those were the only details that he wanted to make sure he conveyed, and the rest is left up to your imagination. Then there's the photorealism guy. This guy snorts detail up the ass for breakfast. He only shows you the trunk because he feels that is where everything that matters about the tree can be found. He wants to convey to you just how intricate and beautiful the tiniest details of the tree really are. You don't have to imagine what the trunk looks like because he's already highlighted everything for you. It's it's ancient, it's full of history, and probably has many stories of its own. The last guy sees it as part of the environment. He doesn't use sharp lines in detail because he doesn't want the tree to be separated and contrast from the environment. For him, they're connected, and it blends beautifully with the lush greenery and the other trees around it. He doesn't think any of the twigs or branches are particularly important, he just wants you to know that the tree has them and has many. And he uses colors as a way to express the beauty of the vast world it inhabits. Even if you you have never met any of these guys before. You can easily tell which one sees the world in black and white, which guy likes to see the big picture, versus which guy likes to spend his time getting lost in the detail, and which guy probably smokes the most weed. Notice how the photorealism guy knew he didn't have enough time to draw the whole tree, so he scaled his project down and just did a small piece instead. Compare that to the guy whose painting was much less detailed, but was able to capture the entire tree and the environment around it. Exactly what we were talking about last video. Your art style will naturally adjust adjust itself in order for you to realize your vision within the amount of time you have. So, what do you see when you look at this tree? What parts of it stand out and catch your eye? If you had to 3D model it, which parts would you spend the most time on? The trunk? The branches? The leaves? The silhouette? How much detail is really important to you? How important are the colors? Is it all about the tree? Or is the environment important too? Like seriously, I'm curious, leave a comment down below. This is a really good exercise, because the answers you give to these questions reveal how you see the world, how you navigate it, but most importantly, how you share it with other people. People can easily see what matters most to you when they look at your art. They can tell when you like to focus on one small thing at a time, or if you like to be aware of everything simultaneously. They can tell if 
if you like to keep it simple in general, or if you like to organize things in clear black and white. That is how people can identify your work even if you don't have your signature on it. And that is why I highly recommend picking a 3D genre that complements your art style. My model and style, for example, is mid-poly because I started out as an indie game modeler, which meant keeping the poly count low was important. But as far as my art style goes, over the years I've realized that I'm totally a shape guy. The most important thing for me is a good looking silhouette. I'm not too interested in the details, and that's why the shader that I'm developing is more of a mix between a tune and an anime style shading. And this style allows me to use color in a way to highlight the most important shapes of my character. It also looks pretty decent without me needing to create a lot of detail, and that allows me to create characters relatively fast, which is important because most of my spare time now is focused on teaching you guys. Now, one last thing that I'd like to say is your art style is not something that's going to stay the same. It constantly evolves and changes and grows with you as you gain new experience and understanding of the world around you. Even for me, my style is kind of simple right now, but as I get closer to teaching you guys everything I know and things start to slow down, I do plan to spend that extra time making my characters look more like this in the future. So it's all a matter of balance between the time you have now and your vision of your work. I hope that helps. As always, please don't forget to ring that bell. It's the only way you will know when I upload new stuff. Hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you around.